Hello, this is David Benaim, and in this video I'm going to show you a bunch of tricks that most people don't know about the Outlook calendar. I hate how in the default view, you can't see a full day without scrolling. It's so annoying because every day you shouldn't need to scroll. It's something you do just so, so often. Go to the view tab, choose time scale, and go to 60 minutes. Do this one time, that is it, and then it's done permanently. Let's say that I make a meeting, and this is going to be called, for example, a discussion on proposal, and this is a call. So I'm just gonna use that. And I press close, you can see that this shows up in blue. Now, if I set up a, a meeting that's called deadline for report and press close, that shows up in red. So you can color code different meetings based on different criteria. My standard meeting, by the way, is none of those colors. It's actually this kind of orangey color. So how do I do that? A feature that also exists in Excel if you go to the View tab and View Settings, you can go to Conditional Formatting. Here I have Deadline, Holder, Training, and Call. Now, training is specific for me because I run training. However, I really recommend that most people use these other three. Deadline, a holder means that it's unconfirmed. A call means that I know that it's locally and I don't have to go anywhere for it or allocate buffer time. Now, let me add a new one. So I'm going to say this is called news. And this is going to be a gray color. Go to condition, search for words, news in frequently used text fields. Uh, you can also do it based on people, though that doesn't work quite as well. And you also have advanced features in these things. Generally, I just use search for the words. You can separate out multiple things with a comma. So news, info latest, etc. Then I press OK, OK again, and OK again. So one time only change, make an appointment, and I just say news about X, save and close, that is gray. And then this is something location, we'll say latest gossip. And this can be anything else frequently used includes location as well. So that is also gray. And notice that I can delete them and treat them. And that's it. You can delete them, treat them as meetings, add recurrence, everything that you can do with normal meeting in the same way. I love this one. You can go to any folder or anything like calendar, mail, etc., And you can right click on something and choose open in new window. That is a way that you can see in different windows, both your calendar and your emails at the same time. I think that's an invaluable tip. To go even one step further, what I love is halving the screen. So drag this to one side, then it's half. Then you choose your other thing here and it will put it on the other side. So you can now see them side by side like that. So if you're someone like me and you arrange meetings all the time, it's good to have a way that people can access a calendar. Now, I don't mean they can see every appointment publicly that is shown, but if I click on this, it will just show when I'm busy, etc., etc., day by day. I find this is something I like to share publicly, <laughs> just so people can see very, very easily and at a glance when I'm busy and when I'm not. Now, how do you do this? It can only be done at the moment in Outlook on the web. So you go to Outlook on the web, which you just sort of log in with your Office 365 email address and click on Outlook there. Then you click on the settings and we're gonna just search for publish, publish a calendar. And then here you can select a calendar if you use multiple, but I just use one. So I can just say that they can only view when I'm busy. So I'm not going to reset it, but essentially you would just select the permissions and see just view when I'm busy rather than view everything, everything, everything and click the publish button there. And here you have unpublish and reset links here. I'm not going to redo it because it's in my email signature. So I don't want to uh, create a new link for past email signatures aren't valid anymore. Now, if you invite someone from your team, and then I can see when all of us are busy and when all of us are free. 
So if I want to have a meeting that all of us can participate in, I might want to check when they're available and when they're not. Now, by default, they haven't even needed to share it with me. This is the default permissions, which means I can see not what they're busy doing, but just that they are busy. Also, if you have the newest version, you might have noticed that location actually searches, and this does it in Phnom Penh, Cambodia. These are the different Java cafes, which is really quite nice, <laughs> and it provides all of these instructions. Remote working is becoming more and more of a thing, and rightly so. We can do a remote working meeting directly from Outlook. Here's how. You pick a slot and you go to new teams meeting. And here what it does is it just sets up a meeting but automatically puts Microsoft Teams meeting in the location and a link to access it here. Now this feature is available if you are using Microsoft Teams, which uh, most organizations who use Office 365 are it's, uh, it's a separate app that I have a really good video that I'll link to as well. It just does loads of really cool stuff for online meetings. But yeah, that's pretty much all it is. And you can just write the title, invite the people as it is. Now for the recipient, once they get it, they can click on join Microsoft Teams meeting. And then it says open Microsoft Teams. If they have it, they will see this to open it directly. Otherwise, I'll just show you how it looks from a web browser experience. I can say join on the web instead. And they don't have to have a Teams account. They don't have to be an Office 365 subscriber. They can just be anyone. Hello, there I am. <laughs> so yeah, it can do video, audio, and other really cool options like recording a meeting and then transcribing the notes with live subtitles. Uh, now the meeting organizer needs to let you in if you're just here. So. That's why it hasn't happened quite yet. But yeah, that's Microsoft Teams meeting there. All right, so that's it for some of my Outlook tips. If you like this video, please click the like button and I have more awesome content coming out soon. So subscribe to my channel if you wanna see cool new things about how to work more efficiently and more effectively with the products you're already using. Thanks for watching.